time for watching another video with a view to learn something new about Islamic banking and finance or Islamic contract or Islamic modes of finance. The topic we have chosen for this video is Tawarruq. If you Google Tawarruq, you will find a lot of material available for reading, for watching. Objective of this video session is like other video sessions, trying to watch a video together an academic video or a professional video, not a video just for fun. Of course, watching any video, whether this is academic, professional or fun, it has this entertainment. This is why we call this activity edutainment. So, using an activity in edutainment, we would like to educate ourselves. The, if you click on this link, you will go to a video. It is one of the unusual videos on Tawarruq, which actually favors the use of Tawarruq in Islamic banking and finance. The presenter says that there is nothing wrong with the contract of Tawarruq from a Sharia viewpoint. From an Islamic juristic viewpoint. The presenter says that there are a few sales involved in this Tawarruq mode of finance and all the requirements of sales transactions from Sharia viewpoint, they are being fulfilled. So, what is wrong with Tawarruq? It is absolutely right, even a person like me, who does not feel entirely comfortable with the use of Tawarruq in Islamic banking and finance, I would agree that Tawarruq is actually an arrangement which fulfills all the Sharia requirements. So, there is one transaction, a sale transaction between commodity broker 1 and this bank 1 or just bank. Then there is another sale transaction between the bank and the customer. Then there is another sale transaction between the customer and commodity broker 2. So, all these transactions, whether they are spot on or on Murabha basis, they fulfill the Sharia requirement. The sequence in which a Tawarruq transaction is executed, this is in compliance with Sharia as well. So, we would tend to agree that Tawarruq actually fulfills all the Sharia requirements of an arrangement. However, those who criticize the use of Tawarruq in Islamic banking and finance, they do not criticize Tawarruq per se. In fact, a lot of those who are not happy with the use of Tawarruq in Islamic banking and finance, they are okay with its use in the context of commodity murabha, an arrangement which is used by Islamic banks for their liquidity management because there is no alternative available for the bank to manage their liquidity. Although a number of people in the beginning were not happy with the use of commodity murabha in the context of liquidity management, but now these guys are happy with this one, including myself. However, when it comes to the use of tawarruq in Islamic personal finance facilities, a lot of people are not happy because this may have reputational risk for Islamic banking and finance. Islamic banking is considered as the face of Islamic banking and finance. About or more than 70% of Islamic financial assets around the world, they are in banking. 
and if in retail banking which is the face of banking we have something which looks like a conventional loan it's not good for the reputation of islamic banking and finance and of course tawarruq as a contract this is fine as a mode of financing this is fine when it comes to organized tawarruq jisme bank customer ki madad kar raha hota hai ke idhar se commodity lo aur idhar bech do bhai tawarruq karna hi hai to let the customer do it by himself waise bhi hum tawarruq type cheeze kar hi rahe hote hain sometimes okay i have bought something from somewhere car have for example wo finance pe bhi li ho although legally this is not correct but in in a lot of cases individuals even sell their leased car to someone as else to generate some liquidity legally this is not right however they do this personal individual kind of arrangement and these things happen so as long as tawarruq is practiced by individuals no one should have any problems with it when it comes to organized tawarruq a lot of eyebrows go up 